uh, oh Allah, forgive those of us who are living and those who are dead, our young and our old, our men and our women, those of us who are present and those of us who are absent. Oh Allah, please whom thou keep alive from among us, keep them alive in submission to thy will. And those who cause to die among us, please cause them to die with faith in thee. Allahumma ameen. Islam, my brothers and sisters, is peace. And anyone who associates Islam with violence, terrorism, is sadly wrong. The facts are simple. Islam is a universal message of peace. Those who commit suicide go to hellfire directly. Those who kill without due process will go to hellfire directly. That is the Islamic way. And to associate uh, 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 Islam with uh, bin Laden is as if to associate Christianity with McVeigh mm -hmm. or Judaism with Baruch Gorstein. I, I think what can, confuses people even more, we've heard uh, some folks throw around terms that are associated with Islam, like jihad, which we know means holy war, or no. a fatwa. Remember that a fatwa was taken out on Salman Rushdie? If you, th this is where some of the confusion comes from. Let if you me, could explain that to us. Let me, please. The word holy war is a non-Islamic terminology. It was a crusader's term used when in the 10th century they attacked from Europe the Holy Land of Palestine. Jihad simply means to struggle and to do one's best, to become best in what is a person is doing that is good. Jihad, the fact that I am talking to you to explain to you what jihad is, is part of my jihad, education to control one's anger and one's tongue. To raise children in New York City is one of the most difficult jihads. There is no translation, and I challenge anyone, any of those who so-called experts, who say jihad means holy war or Islamic holy war. There is no such two words in the Quran, and Al-Quran is the only authoritative Islamic source of knowledge and teaching. There are no two words called holy war or harb muqaddasa. Muslims are taught only to, te uh, to fight only those who fight you and those who prevent you from performing your religious duties and those who throw you out of your homes and properties. That is what jihad is. It's a self-defensive military act that must be performed by a, a religious uh, organization or a, I mean a, a, an Islamic uh, government that has a standing army. No one just can give a fatwa and say I'm gonna do this or do that. Anyone who kills in the name of any religion is doing these acts of violence in spite of the religion not because of the religion. Let me bring uh, Father Dryanen in and, and uh, Rabbi Walty. Father, um, I think most religions consider their God a benevolent one. So how on earth do you explain to people how God could let this happen? Well, I, I think that uh, Christians particularly should be very, very uh, penitent today. After all, it was the Christians that really literally crucified the Jews over many centuries and brought about the Holocaust and necessitated the creation of Israel. And likewise, it was the Christian nations from Europe that went to the Islamic countries and in the opinion of many uh, Muslims corrupted those countries and took away their religion. And today we have this violent uh, feeling of on the part of some, not all uh, Muslims, that something should happen. Consequently, I hope that all religions in this country will quiet the frenzy and, and get rid of the paranoia and that, and that tremendous fallacious sense that by military weapons we can make all of this go away. It's a time when all of the three Abrahamic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, should pray together and talk together and say that the seven million people of Muslim Arab uh, heritage in the, the United States, we should love them as brothers.
Thank you. Rabbi Wolpe. Well, first of all, we are enormously grieved, and our first responsibility as human beings and as clergy is to express our pain to the people who are suffering the loss of their loved ones, to pray for the souls of those who have died, and to try to disentangle ourselves from the kind of analysis that is better due to politicians than to clergy. When you ask how God could have allowed this, it seems to me that the answer is both unfathomable and clear. The unfathomable part is how God could have designed a world in which evil could wreak such enormous and painful consequences. But the clear part is that God has granted human beings free will. And just as you saw the exemplary and extraordinary heroism of people in New York who did remarkable things to save human beings whom they didn't know, who were strangers to them, who gave their own lives on the possibility that they might save somebody whom they had never met and would never meet. It's also true that God gave people the ability to pilot planes into buildings. And the line between good and evil, even though there are evil ideologies in this world and they are rampant all over this world, but the line between good and evil runs in every human heart. And the people who piloted that plane made an evil choice, motivated in part by other evil men. And God doesn't stop them because God gives us the free reign to make of this God's garden or a hell on earth. Let me go to our audience here. Um, Singh, you are a member of the Sikh faith? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. And according to Sikh faith, a religious man can never be a terrorist and a terrorist has no religion. First, I'd like to start with my condolences and my sympathies for the families of the victims of the attack from September 11. And I would also like to express that the Sikh faith totally supports, the Sikh community totally supports President Bush in his vow to eliminate terrorism and its supporters. Uh, let me go over here in our audience to Kevin. You are the, um, correct me if I get this wrong, but you're uh, a, a chaplain, I believe, for the Atlanta Police Department. That's correct. Um, I'm a born-again believer in Christ Jesus. I acknowledge everyone's particular ability to worship the way that they want to worship. However, we are here in America we're born in the land of the brave and the free and with hope of a bright future and tomorrow. Today, we acknowledge the deaths of all those individuals in New York and in Washington. And I'd like to, like my brother over here, pay condolences on behalf of the Atlanta Police and Fire Department to the police officers and firefighters of New York who are suffering through the tragedies uh, of their losses right now. But as we look at it from a particularly religious perspective, I think that as Christians or as those who have a faith base, we have to recognize the foundation of that faith. I think that the father said something very interesting, the Abrahamic triad, the individuals who believe together for Christianity and Judaism and Islam came from Abraham and we're all related in that particular vernacular. So if we can find a way to come together in the midst of this, and I'm not talking about embracing um, the, the tyrants that did this. But I'm talking about as individuals in our country, those individuals who are, are faith-based, those individuals who love each other. If we can find a way to transcend all of the negative things that seem to be floating around in this room and, and in our country and stand on this platform of love and peace and togetherness, we'll find a way to be able to overcome the negatives that will darken our doorways. In the meantime, Father Drynan, how do we keep from being angry at God. Well, I think we have, to, we have to say that all these religions are predicated on love and that we, the Jews, the Christians, and the Muslims say that God has intervened personally in history. And Christians would say that Christ has intervened personally and that we should talk with him. Each of us is very precious and it is inconceivable that Christ or the God of Abraham would have any hatred. That we 
come together in this country for only 4% of humanity. And I'm afraid that we have a hubris now, a pride, an arrogance that says that we are going to run the whole country. We should say we have sinned in many, many ways. We have a lot of reparation to do. And we should say that we don't want revenge or retaliation or reprisal. We want forgiveness. We want restraint. We want love. If all of us said that, we'll find a way to bring peace. al Haj, the, the Quran calls for more than that, does it not? Of course it does. Al Quran says the person who kills a soul that God had made sacred is a sinner. A person who does not follow the teaching of God Almighty is a sinner. Do not kill the life that God has made sacred. If you kill one life, it is as if you have killed all of humanity. If you save one life, you have saved all of humanity. Among the dead, there are more than 800 Muslims also. We have given our condolences. We would like to have anyone who is hearing to this, listening to this program, to please uh, let us know how many of your family members are absent or dead or uh, you don't know where they are. Please let us know by calling CARE 1-800 78 Islam 1878 Islam please let us know because we would like to also pray for the soul of all those who have perished we want to thank the congress the senate the president mr ashcroft and the mayor and all those who have spoken against people to have a backlash against innocent American Muslims and Arabs. Well, we talk. Uh, well, we talk. I should mention here quickly that what you're watching is a memorial service at Riverside Cathedral in New York City for all of the victims in the attack. Uh, Rabbi, uh, I, yes. I think you wanted to say something. Also, I also have did. a question for you from the audience. Go ahead. Well, let me start with the question that you asked, which was, how do we avoid anger at God? And the Jewish answer is that you don't. That to ignore or repress the anger that is part of the human being is to cut off a piece of who you are. There is no reason not to be angry at God at times. Anger is part of any relationship. It's indifference that is destructive of religion, not anger. And you can shake your fist at the sky. You can be bewildered, you can be saddened, you can be angry. God understands that. There is no reason not to be angry, and there is every reason to be angry and hurt and shocked, all of those things. Judaism has a long history of suffering terrible pain, a long history of persecution. And we have learned somehow how to balance both love and justice. Love and justice are not necessarily mutually exclusive. To say that you wish those responsible punished is not to negate your expression of love. It is to realize that sometimes in this world, in order to be able to express love, you also have to express the boundaries and the limits and the rules and the justice that God expressed in the Bible and in creating the world. Question uh, from uh, Brett. Bobby? In the, yes, go ahead. Uh, we would like to invite all Americans next Sunday to attend a mosque service next to their homes or in their neighborhood because we have a national open house for mosques so that our neighbors and those who have questions, who still doubt that Muslims are not as good citizens as they are, to please come to the mosques and visit. It will begin from 10 o'clock until noon prayer. Have you had many reports, al Haj, of attacks yes. against mos yes. mosques? Yes, over 210 incidents of hate crimes have been reported all over the country. Uh, one person was shot, killed in uh, uh, Texas, unfortunately. Mosques have been firebombed. Um, uh, Muslim women who wear the scarf are assaulted. They are taunted in their schools. Women are afraid to walk out alone anymore. So please, before you rush to judgment, find out who these terrorists are whom we have condemned strongly and 
then make a judgment. Let's not scoop down to the level of terrorism. Brett,